Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're doing a Christmas sled. For my project today, I'm using this sled that I got from Kmart Australia for $16. It's actually meant to be a serving board, but we are going to turn it into wall decor. My first step is to remove the little sled bottom. So I'm just using a drill to remove the screws that are attaching it to the wood piece. I will spray this with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. I am then using some of Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint over the top of my wooden sled piece there and you can see I'm skipping certain sections I don't mind if I do that I want this to look a bit like weathered wood planks so it's going to take two coats to get the coverage I want here Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and most of these products on our website theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au so as I said, this has actually been marketed as a serving board for the center of the table and I can definitely see how that would be absolutely gorgeous. But as soon as I saw these, I was imagining them on the wall as a Christmas decoration. And of course you could have it be functioning both ways. It could be wall decor and also a serving board, but I'm gonna add some raised elements. So ours is definitely for the wall. Here you can see that now that my paint is dry, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to go around the edges and do some distressing. I want this to look like old vintage wood, so I want to pull back some of that paint to see the wood tones underneath. After removing my sanding dust, I'm going to be using IOD's Barn Wood Planks Stamp. I'm going to be inking up half of this stamp. So I want to have the center part and then the line along one side because I actually want this to look like it's three planks of wood. So I've just inked up one side. I'm then going to turn the stamp over and position it on the left side and then I'm going to press down. So I'm almost dividing it into thirds and I'm not pressing super hard. I don't want this to be a perfect transfer here. I just want there to be hints of that wood, have that beautiful wood pattern. And then for this side, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm going to be turning the stamp around so that there's just the lines in the center there. And then I'm pressing down. For the center part, I'm going to just be adding ink to the center of the stamp. So you can see I've wiped off any excess from the lines on the sides. I've only got ink on a small part in the center, and then I'm only going to apply pressure in the center where that gap is. I don't want too much overlapping of that wood grain. In this stamp pack, you also get some end pieces that look like they have the little nails from the planks of wood. So I'm just going to add some to the bottom left-hand corner there, and then I'm going to ink up that same stamp again and put it in the top right. I just want the hint of plank wood here. And then when the ink is completely dry, I'm using that 220 grit sandpaper again to lightly distress and sort of fade that ink a little bit. If you want this look, but you don't have this stamp, I know that there is also some wood grain tools that you can use to drag through wet paint, or you could paint on this effect maybe. I'm then going to be using some amazing casting resin. I'm pouring out equal parts A and B into separate measuring containers. And then once I have the equal amounts of each of those, I'm going to be pouring them into a silicone cup to mix them together. And once you have them together, you want to stir it really well for about 30 seconds, or you will notice that the mixture goes from being cloudy to being clear. And you just want to make sure you stir it really well to make sure it's combined well. And then I'm going to be adding that resin into the jingle mold. This was from last year's IOD holiday release and I'm just pouring it into this leaping deer. There was a little bit of dry resin that fell out into my wet resin, but I'm not worried because you will not be able to see this once my design is set. And that takes about 10 minutes. And then you'll see it has turned an opaque white and I'm going to flex that mold and pull that casting out gently. Sometimes the antlers and the feet take a little bit longer to set just because they're so thin, but they're fine to pull out, just be gentle with them. 
I'm then going to set this off to the side and I'm going to take out this stencil here. I will link this one in the description and I'm going to be using part of the design. I am going to stencil on North Pole first up the top and then you'll see there is a leaping deer in the center. We're going to actually use the IOD mold that we created for that. So I'm using a JRV stencil brush for this one. I believe it's a one inch stencil brush and I'm using Dixie Bell's Barn Red Chalk Mineral Paint. You can see that each time I'm offloading my brush before I do any stenciling. I'm just going to sit the little D there to make sure that it's going to fit properly and then you'll see that I've adjusted where the stencil sits so that the bottom text is spaced far enough that our D will fit in between it. So just repeating the same steps offloading my paint before I add them to the stencil and working my way across until I have the whole image set. If you don't have access to this particular stencil, maybe you have a letter stencil that you could use to spell out this particular design or IOD has some great letter stamps that you could use instead. Next, I'm going to focus on the deer that we cast and I'm using Dixie Bell's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint straight over the top of the deer and it's going to take two coats to get the coverage that I want. Now, I did use resin for this. I just find resin to be the easiest option, but you could definitely use clay for this if you do not have resin. I kept my deer pretty simple and just went with this brown tone because I am going for a bit more of a farmhouse Christmas feel here, but you could definitely change this up. You could paint it a different color. You could go gold. It really is up to you and the look you're trying to achieve. Next, I'm going to be painting this little bell here that I've already cast. I will link the mold for this in the description below, and I'm using Dixie Bell's Juniper on the greenery that appears on this little bell casting, and then I'm going to be using Using paint couture's luxe bronze metallic to paint over the little bells in this casting and then it's a little bit tricky to see here but there's also a bow just above the bells so I'm going to use what little I have left on my brush to then go in and paint over the top of that so that the bow is a little bit more visible. I want to add a little bit more age to my deer, so I'm taking some of Dixie Belle's White Bestang Wax and I'm going over the top of my dry chocolate paint and I'm working it into all of the details and then I'll use a paper towel to wipe back the excess. I just want a hint of that white, give it a bit more of a vintage faded feel. Next, I'm going to work out the position of my bell on my deer and once I've got that worked out, I'm going to heat up the casting so that I can mold it a little bit better to my deer and then I'm going to use some hot glue on the back of the bells and attach it to the little deer. I'm then going to add some more hot glue to the back of the deer so that we can attach it to the sign. I used hot glue to attach my resin piece because it was easier and it sets quick but you could also use super glue for this. I'm tidying up any excess glue with a baby wipe. Next, I'm going to focus on the sled base. I've already given this a coat of Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer so that it has something for the paint to grip on. And then I'm using some of Dixie Belle's Coffee Bean Chalk Mineral Paint over the top. It is going to take two coats to get the coverage I want. Now, ideally, you would probably use black paint in a spray can and I definitely would have but I had run out so I did the next best thing. This is such a beautiful paint though so it really worked out in the end. I am not going to be painting all over the back of the sled pieces because that's going to be going up against the wall and I am going to be using that same spray sealer to seal my entire piece once I'm done. It's just easier with the curves of this particular sled to do it all in one go. So I'm just going to work my way around the sled base until I have all of those areas painted. As I said, it's going to take two coats to get the coverage I want. And it doesn't matter if I miss a few pieces here and there because I am going to be doing a bit of distressing a bit later. So I have my base painted. I'm going to put my design back on, make sure it's the right way up, and then I'm going to attach the base again with those screws using my drill. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm going to be using a wet wipe to wipe back some of our coffee bean chalk mineral paint to show some of that lovely gold underneath. If you're working with something that doesn't have a gold base, you could come in with some sort of a gilding wax or a metallic paint instead for this step. When I'm finished distressing my piece, as I said, I did use Rust-Oleum's clear matte sealer to seal my piece. Next, we're going to make a bow. I have my tail of my bow. You can see I've got that excess fabric. I'm folding over a loop on one side and then folding over a loop on the other side. These are gonna be the two smaller loops. And then I'm going to come in and make a, another loop on the other side. So that's our third loop, our second loop on that side. You can see it's a little bit bigger than the other one. I'm making another loop on the right hand side. And then you'll see I've got two loops on each side and then I'm going to make a third loop on the other side there. You can see they're getting progressively bigger and I'll repeat the same step on the other side making a third loop there. So we have three loops on each side. You can see the tail of my bow in the front there that I'm holding with my thumb. And I'm then going to carefully bend over the tail piece of the ribbon and make a little loop in the center. That's going to be the center of our bow. And you can make this as big or as small as you want. I'm then going to twist that over the back of our entire bow that we're creating. And I'm gonna hold that in place and then grab a clear twist tie or a piece of wire, whatever you've got to use. And that is actually going to hold our bow in place. So I'm gonna put that through the loop that we made in the center and pull that around and then close up that twist tie, twist it around to hold it in place. So feel free to go back and rewatch that. There are a few steps, but once you get the hang of it, it's just a really fun and easy bow that you can do. I have that all organized. Now I need to cut off the excess on the left-hand side. I am gonna make the left-hand side a little bit bigger than the right. I just think that feels a little bit quirky and cute. So this particular bow works best if you're working with ribbon that has wire in it. So you can see here, I'm just having a bit of a play and adjusting the bow. I'm shaping each of our little loops, sort of fluffing them up, making them a little bit bigger and robust, sort of having a play with how they're arranged. And again, this is gonna to be to your liking. You could do more than three loops on each side. I definitely recommend an odd number. I'm now using the wire that we attached in the center to attach the bow to our little sled. So I'm just putting it in position and then tightening off that wire. And once I've done that, I'm just going to adjust how the little tails sit. I don't want them to obstruct the text that we have. I'm then going to use my scissors to cut off the ends of the bow, make them look a little bit nicer and tidier. And again, this is going to be to, to your liking. I used a plaid ribbon here. I love plaid. We're going for a bit of a farmhouse Christmas feel here. But you could definitely go with something glittery, maybe something a bit more French country. It's up to you. So I want this design to be able to be hung on the wall. Now there is not really an attachment on the back for that. So I'm going to use some of this other ribbon that I got from Costco. I love that it's got um, a Hessian design. Again, it goes with that farmhouse feel. I'm just measuring how much I'm going to need and then cutting that off. And then I'm going to turn over my little sled and I'm going to tie it to each of the sides with a double knot on each side. So this is going to be good for hanging, but I felt like it also looked like the little rope that would be used to pull a sled along. So I still feel like it does tie in with the design that we're, that we're going for, the look we're trying to achieve. You could definitely attach something to the back that maybe is a bit more hidden if you don't like this look. Next, I'm going to take some greenery that I also got from Kmart Australia last year. These are just some little green picks and I'm just going to work them in behind the clear twist tie that we used to hold our bow in place. And here's our finished Christmas sled. I love how this turned out. I have always loved sleds, but we don't have much access to them here in Australia. So I was so excited to see these in our Kmart. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. 
If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.